Accept the Bible for what it says. And if Jesus Christ said, whosoever putteth away his wife and marrieth another committeth adultery, and whosoever marrieth her that is put away from her husband committeth adultery, we ought to take those words seriously. And if you want your marriage to last, and if you want to do things the way that God's word says, and you want God's blessing upon your marriage, don't be looking for someone that is already divorced. I would say the, the one exception to that is if someone got divorced, but then their spouse has already died. Because in a sense, then they would be widowed and then they'd be free to marry whom they will only in the Lord. That would be a case where you could probably do that. But deciding on marrying someone is a big deal. This is not a choice to be made flippantly or for the wrong reasons. Because again, you're considering someone that you're going to live with. Living with someone, spending all your time with, you, you know, you need to love that person, you need to care for that person. It, you know, we need to be careful. Why, you know, a lot of people have, um, I've met people that maybe their aspiration is to be a pastor. And, and the Bible says in, in um, 1 Timothy that, that, the, that the bishop is to be the husband of one wife and that he's supposed to, to rule his own house well and he has children, you know, and there's these qualifications and they're thinking, well, I just want to get married because I want to be a pastor someday. Well, that's great that you want to, you know, if you desire the office of a bishop, the Bible says you desire a good work. But don't just go and marry somebody and make that vow unless you're serious and seriously committed to that person, you love that person, it's someone you do want to spend the rest of your life with, and you're not just trying to check off a box so that you can go ahead and, and do whatever other thing. Or people do that to get visas in the country, do other things, you know, whatever. There's all kinds of different reasons why, you know, to get benefits from the government. Oh, I just want to have less taxes or something. And, and people end up getting married. Look, that's the wrong reason. Now, it may be beneficial. It may help you. It may be a goal. You may want to get married because you want to have a family. You want to have a spouse. That's great. Look for a spouse then. But just understand that this is a lifelong decision that you are making. And you have to have the attitude that once you're married, you stay married until one of you is dead. That is what you are committing to, and that's what you're getting into. You have to find someone that has the right priorities and values. And this is, so I'm going to get into finding a wife and finding a husband in just a minute. But the, the, the basics for either finding a husband or a wife, you need to find someone who's saved. You need to find someone who's not divorced and someone who's a godly person. Someone who loves God's word, someone who loves the Bible and has their priorities and their values that line up with yours. Because priorities and values will determine all of the major decisions that you're going to make in the future. When you decide what you're going to do, where you're going to live, where you're going to go to church, where, you know, all these lifelong decisions, it's going to be based off of what you believe, what's in your heart, what's driving that. What do you care about? What do you prioritize? Someone who's just real greedy and all they care about is money and they have a love of money, where the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. Well, guess what? They're going to be making all their decisions based on money. Oh, I can't go to church today because I have to work. Oh, I can't do, the, you know, I can't read my Bible. I got too much work to do. I got all this other stuff to do. I'm trying to make money. And if you marry someone like that, you're not going to be very happy. 